Howdy folks, my name is Shuin Kashi and you're watching Astro Island. Tonight, we're going to be capturing a horse in space with flames coming out of it. I'm talking about the Horse and Nebula in the constellation of Orion. Now, with a little bit of magic, let's change into something, you know, a little more comfortable for astrophotography in the Caribbean and let's get to imaging, shall we? All right. This seems more like it, something way more comfortable than what I was uh, wearing before. Now, many of you have been asking, what's behind door number one? And for those of you who looked at my video from before would have known that I purchased the Aska FRA 600 and some additional accessories to go with it. Now, here's the kicker. After purchasing everything, I realized that the weight of the scoop was a little too much heavy uh, for the existing counterweight bars. So I needed to purchase an additional counterweight. In addition to that, I had the, the, the saddle was not the same size as the existing one that comes with the Celestron AVX mount. So what I needed to do was purchase a new saddle, you take off the one that I have and put on that new one. And that took, you know, a few weeks you know, in terms of shipping, arriving, clearing and whatnot. And then of course, when everything was finally ready, again, you know, our famous friend comes around, clouds. And it was pretty interesting how the clouds were these past couple of nights, whereby you had perfectly clear skies, I would run out, you know, start setting up and everything. And then maybe within about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, large, thick rain clouds, heavy rains, had to wrap up, bring everything inside pretty quickly. And then within about 20 minutes or so, perfectly clear skies again. So that has been my predicament for the past couple of uh, weeks. But this past week, uh, things have been pretty good. I'm pretty confident that uh, tonight is going to be an excellent night. We, I, I, I expect to get, capture about maybe three to four hours. Uh, fingers crossed, no clouds to come again. And let's see what happens. So... Without further ado, here we are with the Asuka FRA 600 with all the accessories that are required, set up and ready to go. All right. And there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Asuka FRA 600. Along with the guide scope, the ASI Air Plus connected to it, we have the new ADM saddle that I was mentioning to you about. Um, it comes with the 0.7x focal reducer. So initially, as you can see, this is a 600 uh, uh, millimeter, sorry, 600 focal length in um, for the scope. And by having the 0.7x reducer, so 600 by 0.7, brings us down to about 420 uh, millimeters of uh, focal length. So what that basically means now is it's a, a wider field of view and what's going to happen is it's going to capture much more details at a faster rate. So it's no longer 5.6. It brings it down now also to about 3.9. So much the lower the number, the faster the images uh, can be captured, the more light that's being captured at a faster rate. So that's uh, pretty good for me. It means, as I mentioned in my previous video, there's going to be much less, either A, much less hours or more hours that allow me to capture uh, even more details as, as before. So I have the ASI 294MC Pro. I have the uh, ZWO um, filter wheel, sorry, not the filter wheel, but the filter holder. And because I'm capturing the Horsehead Nebula tonight, I, you know, prefer to capture it uh, using the Optolong l Pro filter. So inside of here, we have the Optolong l Pro. You can just maybe see it just at the edge here, the Optolong l Pro. Let me loosen it just a little bit. All right, so the Optolong l Pro. All right, make sure that's nice and tight. All right, that basically just snaps in right there. Um... And yes, so we have the guide scope, the Orion 50mm guide scope, along with the ASI 2, well, sorry, 120mm mini guide scope, um, the ASI, ASI Air Pro, and what else? Um, well, of course, the Celestron AVX mount, 
and this is what i was telling you about uh with regards to the uh, second counterweight um so initially the avx comes with one counterweight it's about 11 pounds um, but of course this was not enough to balance the scope because of the um, added weight now onto the mount so as i mentioned i purchased another um counterweight that would make sure everything would balance because this is about as you mentioned um 13 point something pounds all of the um additional accessories brought it to um brought it up to about 20 22 pounds um you know it's gonna be way too heavy for this um counterweight bar only sorry not the counterweight bar but the counterweight so another one is purchased to make sure everything balances off so just to show you see right so we have the second counterweight bar that's balancing everything off so um we're pretty much ready and good to go all right it's just about 6 15 pm and as you can see the skies are perfectly clear i'm really really happy and i hope that you know the skies stay like this all night um as mentioned we're going to capture the horse head nebula barna 33 for about four hours so here's hoping clear skies all night all right it's just about 7 pm um the skies have remained uh, perfectly clear absolutely beautiful not a single cloud in the sky so that's really really good everything has already been assembled all right so we have the asia pro that's going to be controlling everything uh the camera the guide scope the mount and what i forget what i forgot to mention was that you'll notice that the asia pro has an antenna and that's mainly due to my good friend and buddy uh clayton morgan he he's uh, the assistant it manager where i work and what he did i mentioned to him that the asi air pro has a lot of issues with, with a wi-fi connection it's very spotty it, it keeps dropping the connection so he told me to purchase an antenna and he was the one that you know opened up the uh, the asi air pro which is like a, a mini pc and he assembled the antenna for me and since then <laughs> this thing has been working fantastic um i can be at a, a a really good distance maybe about 20 feet and i still would not get any drops in the wi-fi connection so kudos see you again clayton morgan really really thank you for for getting this installed for me you're a lifesaver all right that being said um we're going to start imaging very shortly let me just show you up in the sky so we have Right, if you look right here, right here, that's the star Sirius. And if you go just a little higher, you just may be able to see three stars. Right? Those are what you call the three stars that make up the, the belt or the sword of Orion. The last star down below, that's uh, the star Alnitak, in which we will be capturing the Horse and Nebula. And some of the other stars around it are... Uh, Rigel uh, and others, they make up uh, the Orion constellation. And that reddest star, that's what you can see there. Um, now, most people pronounce it as Betelgeuse. And of course, you know, that name ended up being changed because of the movie. But the actual pronunciation, and I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, is Betelgeuse. Right? So just, you know, just a little FYI for a lot of people, the actual pronunciation is uh, Betelgeuse or, you know, somewhat close to that pronunciation and not actually Beetlejuice as you know it, it, it's commonly now uh, pronounced so just a little uh, just a little fun fact all right um so as you can see this is where I'm in right now this is the park that I'm in and of course as you can see there's a lot of street lights which is why I purchased the Optolong L Pro filter so what that does is going to help me reduce some of the, the the brightness or some of the, the the you know the light that's coming in from many of these uh, sodium vapor uh, street lamps oh as you can see <laughs> street lights and vehicles that are passing you know all of these things can affect my imaging but with the optolong l pro it helps quite a lot reduce some of that uh, light pollution so let's just without further ado let's um get started to um doing the polar alignment and uh, focusing and guiding and we'll be back shortly so we've already polar aligned we've already done our focus you are using the button of mask uh, stars are looking uh, pretty nice and tight uh, nice and sharp as you see 
right now we're doing multi-star guiding which is basically using multiple stars to ensure that uh guiding remains a pinpoint uh, with regards to movement um what else usually with the avx you know a lot of people say the guide speed or the guide rate should be you know between one to three seconds but again the avx <laughs> is a unique uh creature of its own a, a unique mount of its own it usually performs better using between 0.5 seconds to one second guiding as you can see right now guiding is pretty good it's going down just started the guiding process see and these numbers uh, will continue to go down in a bit see uh, and i guess from there we can start imaging right so what i usually do oh will you look at that now this is just a 10 second capture in terms of using the uh the camera for plate solving and what you see right here that little fuzz is actually the flame nebula so can you imagine that this is only about a 10 second shot and we've already begun capturing just a little you know a little uh, a bit of details for the for the flame nebula so can you imagine what i plan to do tonight is capture for about 180 seconds per image for about four hours so what we're going to do now we're going to go to the auto run and right, come back here um, i'm going to clear off everything because i was using flats before and um, we're going to do i usually leave it as a um as a hundred because most of my images are usually five hours per night so we're going to do you know falls which is going to be maybe about 80 85 i may go just a little extra depending on time um i have the meridian flip enabled which basically means once the telescope has crossed the meridian or just about arrived at the meridian it's going to automatically slew on the other side or rotate and go to the other side all right so let's begin imaging all right so all right i mean this guiding looks pretty good still and it's going to continue going down and we're gonna start with three minute exposures and we'll be back and we'll see how it looks afterward all right folks <laughs> we are almost here we just have about let's see about five more seconds remaining four more seconds and let us see first light of the flame and horse nebula using the Asuka fre 600 all right it's going to be loading up right now first image I'm pretty excited. Oh man. <laughs> Will you look at that? Will you <sighs> my goodness. Much more details of the flame nebula. As you can see, the horse head nebula is just about uh, beginning to appear. You're beginning to see all that reddish. What you're seeing there is the, the nebulosity behind uh the horse head nebula. And those little, those little circles that you're seeing around there, uh, that, that's quite all right. Um, those are what we call dust modes, which is basically some of the dust that's on the, um, the sensor of maybe the, the scope or the camera. And again, those can be what I call ironed out or removed using what we call flat frames or flat calibration frames. So no worries about that. I'm not worried. That's going to be removed in a uh, post processing. And of course, our friends in space. That little line that you see there is actually a satellite that passed by or zoomed by during, uh, during the imaging. So I happened to capture a satellite in movement at the same time. Again, guiding is pretty good. Let's kind of focus. Ah, guiding is <laughs> pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Looking really good. And there you have it, folks. First light. You saw it first with <laughs> my telescope. First light with the Aska FRA 600. One image, 180 seconds or three minutes. Look at the details. Pretty good. So can you imagine four hours or if I decide to um, continue capturing for much more nights, uh, several hours, maybe 10 or 12 or 20 hours uh, capturing this object, you can imagine the amount of details that are going to come out in the end. So I'm excited. I'm super excited. I'm going to leave this to run now and we'll catch you during post processing and we'll see how the final image comes out. The Horsehead Nebula, also known as Barna 33, is a dark nebula situated in the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex. Specifically, it's found in the Orion's Belt region 
near the leftmost star, Alnitak. This iconic interstellar dust cloud appears as a silhouette against a bright emission nebula, IC434. The distinctive shape resembling a horse's head is created by the dense, cold gas and dust blocking the light from behind. It's a captivating celestial feature, often photographed in various wavelengths, revealing the intricate details of star formation within its, its cosmic surroundings. We have just about 15 more minutes remaining before we wrap up our imaging session. That should take us into about 4 hours in total for tonight. Tonight has been really fantastic. There's been no clouds, there's been no rain and no Saharan dust. If it continues like this throughout the rest of the week, I may include some um, additional hours. Um, maybe I may go into about 14 to 18 hours in total before I call it, you know, full and full imaging session again capturing the horse head and flame nebula first light for the ASCA FRA 600 telescope I love this scope I really really love this scope it's fantastic well thanks everyone for coming along on this journey with me another video with uh, yours truly Astro Island and remember it's not the size of your telescope that counts it's how you use it Adios, amigos.